experimenting with the new geometry nodes has just been a crazy adventure and i've got a new effect from you which came out of those experimentations and i'm really excited to share it with you guys so yeah let's get right into it okay so this effect's gonna be 100 percent procedural right so uh, in order to start we're gonna go ahead and move to our geometry nodes editor and let's click on new so uh, we have this our default cube here i'm gonna delete the light and the camera for the default cube we don't need it because we're gonna add a uh, mesh input so i'm gonna disconnect the geometry input do a shift a and let's search for an icosphere right so and again this effect works with any type of meshes we're gonna start with an icosphere and later on i'll show you how it works with the other ones right so let's connect this right into this geometry output and we've got our icosphere here i'm gonna give it three subdivisions all right uh before we even start getting into nodes right so this is blender 3.0 if you're using previous version your nodes are gonna look completely different so i will really advise you guys to go ahead and download that i'm gonna link the download link for blender 3.0 in the description yeah and you guys can just check it out from there right so let's bring in a node that's called set position so basically this node defines the position of the points on on your mesh right so what we'll do is we'll use a wave texture to actually displace this, this position right so i'm going to take this factor and put it right into the offset now as you can see it's just displacing it in a really weird way and even though if i animate it it's just gonna look awful so let's fix that and in order to fix that what we're going to do is so basically i don't want it to be like this right i want it to be displacing it right on the normals of of the points on the psychosphere so it, for those who don't know what normal is normal is basically the direction the face or the vertex is facing on at that moment so in order to do that we're going to need to know what the normal of this mesh is right for that there's an input called normal right so i'm going to bring that in and we'll use this data and multiply it so for that we'll need a vector math node so just remember a normal math node won't work a vector math node is needed here so vector math node and we're going to multiply the normal with the wave texture so i'm going to change this from add to multiply and now if as you can see that it's it's displacing the mesh right outwards right so if i animate this now it will give me the effect that i'm actually looking for so in order to get that effect all i have to do is uh, put hashtag frame and then divided by let's say 10 so hashtag frame is a driver basically it's automatically going to use the number of frame that i'm on right now and just animate it according to that and we are dividing it by 10 to slow down the effect so just depending on the amount uh, you divided by the slower the effect's going to be right so i'm going to keep it to 10 right now so this is already looking good but i want to add a little bit more randomness to it right so i'm going to duplicate my math node here and multiply it with a random value so uh, let's bring in the random value node and let's change it from float to a vector because again we are dealing with vectors and let's add that in the bottom socket and as soon as i do that now the moment is a little bit more erratic as compared to before right we are done with as far as the animation part goes but i want to add uh, circles to every vertex that is there in here right so for that we can instance something on it right so for that we'll need a point instance node so i'll just type instance and it's now now called instance on point i'm gonna use this i want my original mesh as well so i'm gonna use a join geometry to bring this instance in currently it won't show anything because we have not instanced anything over there so i'll just duplicate my icosphere here and let's use this as an instance right so as soon as i do that it, it just gives me something really big uh, which i don't want uh, so let's reduce the size to 0 0.1 it's still too big so 0 0.05 and i think this looks okay let's also do a shade smooth here because why not <laughs> so yeah i think now these points are looking great now we also want lines for every edge that is connecting here right so for that we're gonna go ahead and create another mesh now it's simple let's add a mesh to curve line right so as soon as it, so if i can convert this uh, icosphere into curve it will automatically go ahead and add lines to it so like if you if you just look this uh, look at only this can you see this this is automatically adding lines to the edges instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, adding faces right so that's how the mesh to curve node works so we'll first convert it into a curve and then we'll convert it back to a mesh so we'll do a curve to mesh the next thing that we'll add here is a circle 
So basically what we're going to do is for all those lines that are created, we're going to wrap a circle around it, right? So uh, let's uh, add a circle uh, and we're going to use a curve circle because mesh circle it won't work on this. So curve circle and let's take it and put it in profile curve. Now it just blows it up. Again, we need to reduce the size of this. So let's reduce it to 0 0.05 again. Now that's too big 0 0.01 all right so this is looking fine can reduce the resolution to about 10 just to give a little bit more performance boost geometry nodes is pretty much done uh but what we need to do is we need to add different materials to different part of it right so i'm going to go ahead and add set material node so this is uh geometry node 3.0 so if you want to define a material on an object you need to make sure and tell blender as to which material it's supposed to look at for what right so for the curves i'm gonna go ahead and use material one let's create a few more materials so that we have the materials to reference to right so let's say this is the one for the points and then we'll create another one for uh, the faces right so the first material is for the edges then we've got points and we've got faces so this one would be edges i'm going to duplicate it and let's give this one faces and let's duplicate it by shift d and let's give this one material for points right so now we've got three different materials for three different points now the render that i showed you originally was created in cycles so i'm going to go ahead and switch it to cycles again you can it works the same in ev as well it just the glass doesn't look that great so i'm going to use a glass material it won't look as great in ev right but since we have cycles x here i might as well just use cycles so switch to cycles right now we don't see anything and for that uh, let's add a plane and let's move it up and let's go to a shading tab go to render and for this i'm going to just create a new material called lights and uh, let's delete the principal bsdf and let's add emission so basically emission works as lights in cycles so i'm going to use that uh, let's bring up the strength to five and i'm going to duplicate this bring it down and now we've got a good light here yeah, right so now let's start working on our material so the first material would be edges now edges i'll just add a simple metallic texture so just bring up the metallic and bring up the specular if you want you can bring down the roughness i'll just keep it as it is and uh, that's it uh, that's all for that for faces we're just going to use a simple glass texture so let's add glass and bring in the glass bsdf and just plug this into the surface i'm going to change the iro to 1.333 that's the iro for water so just give it a little bit more watery look gonna reduce the world strength to zero because i don't like it and let's increase the roughness to about 0 0.3 i think okay so now most of our work is done and the actual work that we're going to do is is actually in this point texture right for that i'm going to delete the principal bsdf and then add an emission shader here and let's plug that into the surface and let's use a geometry node here and we'll take the position and use that to define the color of our emission right and let's just bring the emission strength to about five so that uh, we have a little bit more emission in here now again this geometry node is also giving us some black spots i don't like that so i'm going to add a color ramp and just give it some custom colors if you guys just want to go with the original one that's totally fine with me as well so let's change this to ease and i'm gonna add a few more right so let's add like six in total uh so the first one i'm gonna go ahead and change it to blue and let's change this color to light blue and uh, this one to green and then this one to light green ish right and the last one i'm gonna go ahead and change it to orangish or something right so now we have uh, the entire setup ready now i also want to go ahead and give it a little bit more glow when i actually render this so i'm gonna go to the you're gonna do a little bit more com composition in this right so we'll do shift a and add a glare node so basically you first click on use nodes that's important and you you end up with the render layers node and composition or composite node basically so use that add a glare node and 
just change this to fog low and change this to high right now if i render this out for some reason cycles have a default samples of 4000 uh, we are never gonna need that many samples so let's reduce it to 80 i think that's fine i like a little bit more contrast in my scenes so i'm gonna click on color management and change the look to high contrast and just just do a test render right so for that we have to add a camera in our scene so uh let's add that it looks okay so let's render it out and see how it looks all right uh i think it's looking fine so yeah uh our effects almost ready and if you run it it just works really awesome you can also control the amount of effect just by adding a simple color ramp right after the wave texture and just uh maybe move it around just so that you can control it move the white portion or the black portion around and you can just control the size or the amount of effect that's coming in your uh, structure you can change this like i said it works for both so you can uh, go ahead and change this as well to uh let's say i don't need it i don't want an icosphere so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this and uh, maybe let's try a cube and let's add this here now it, it just looks really weird and that's because the number of vertices is really low so if i bump it up to 30 now yeah as you can see it's already giving us an interesting effect uh, i think the 30 is really high so uh, let's go down to eight yeah, we can even change this to a plane uh, so for plane you can just bring in a grid and uh, yeah just increase the number of vertices to 10 and there we go you can obviously increase the size if you don't like how it looks and uh, yeah the effect works on any kind of object that you want to add into your scene and it will just looks as awesome as you can see right now right so i hope that this video was helpful and you learned something today if you did don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more because there are going to be more videos right and i'll see you guys in the next video